Welcome to Political Beatdown. I'm Ben Micellis, joined by Michael Cohen. Cohen, let's get into it. The Manhattan District Attorney criminal case against Donald Trump set to start on April 15th. Donald Trump filed two separate emergency applications with the appellate division. Both were denied, one on the grounds of a venue change, one relating to a gag order that actually mentioned you in it. The appellate division rejected Donald Trump's attempt to try to block this criminal trial from taking place. So it looks like, buckle up, full speed ahead. Donald Trump yesterday made a very unhinged, bizarre, and frankly dangerous announcement that was condemned by all sides, Donald Trump saying that he would want to keep in place all of those egregious state law uh, abortion bans. And Donald Trump praised the Supreme Court justices that overturned Roe v. Wade. Donald Trump was then criticized by people like Lindsey Graham and former Vice President Pence for not going too far. And then Donald Trump started attacking Lindsey Graham and said that uh, it's his fault that Lindsey Graham is still a senator in South Carolina. Uh, we will break that down as well. Donald Trump's stock has been continuing to tank down 40% from its high last week. And as you unpeel the layers here, it gets shadier and shadier with the more we know about it. Speaking about things getting shadier and shadier, that doesn't seem to prevent legacy media from reporting on anything that Donald Trump serves up and feeds them. Like, over the weekend, Donald Trump tried to claim that there was this $50.5 million fundraiser, which just so happens to be double the amount that President Biden actually raised and that President Biden actually reported and that the donors had to actually report. Donald Trump chose to do his fundraiser at a time period where he wouldn't even have to report it until July, yet the media ran with the headline. Michael Cohen, you know more than anyone how Donald Trump will just come up with a number and then ask people to try to fill in things to make that number make sense. And it never makes sense, but doesn't stop the media from pushing his propaganda. And then uh, the uh, MAGA Republicans in the House Judiciary uh, Committee uh, were posting these weird images of Donald Trump's face as the eclipse, very weird and bizarre behavior. Um, showing what a cult this Republican Party has become. We're going to talk about that and more on this episode of Political Beatdown. But Cohen, let's start at the top with these two rulings within 24 hours of the uh, appellate division in New York rejecting Donald Trump's attempt to delay, delay, delay. What do you make of it, sir? What I've been saying all along, if you follow me on my Twitter account, uh, at Michael Cohen 212, you'll see what I said. It stinks of desperation. He is not fearful right now. He is petrified. And he's willing to do and say anything within which to delay it. Because that's all Donald wants to do, is figure out how to delay this so that he does not have to start the trial on the 15th of April. But Judge Mershon has been crystal clear all along that he intends on starting this. In fact, as you know, this case was supposed to have started on April 1st, but due to a slick move, and I'll grant them that it was a slick move, they ended up delaying this case by two weeks. Unlike many of the other cases that are right now on almost like a permanent hiatus, this case will move forward on April 15th. Now, I will also say that it was released, uh, the questions that... Judge Mershon is posing to prospective jurors. And one of the questions that I'm kind of like honored, you know, about it is, do you listen to Michael Cohen's podcasts, uh, whether it's mea culpa or political beatdown? Have you read either of his two New York Times bestselling books? It's like the greatest fucking advertisement for me possible, right? Do you listen to the podcasts? Do you read his books? Or do you follow him on various social media? Do you know who he is? Now, I'm going to tell you something. And yesterday, I was with my, my lawyer, Danya Perry, 
She actually teaches at NYU School of Law, a course in professional responsibility. And she asked me if I would come and if I would speak to the class, which I did, and to incredible, incredible applause and and just um, engagement by these young students. The thing that I found interesting and what I found uh, to be worthy of conversation with our brigaders, Ben, is many of these students, and we're talking about NYU law school students. You're really talking about a top, 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 top tier law school in America. Many of them were really kind of oblivious to the nuances of not just my case specifically, but to the entire scenario of what's going on between the GOP, the DNC, between Trump and Biden. And that, to me, I want to sort of take it from a different perspective while we're all relying on Gen Z in order to provide us with a massive, massive November win. It does go to show you that there are a lot of people here in New York who are not biased, as Trump would like to say, that they are not biased towards him and that he can receive a fair trial come April 15th. You know, if any of these young students, and again, these are brilliant, brilliant students at a top, top tier law school, if they are not intimately familiar with the facts and circumstances surrounding this case, I don't see how it's possible that their ongoing continuous allegation that they cannot get a fair trial here in New York holds any weight. So as those appellate division orders were handed down, and I'll pull them up in just a a moment, Justice Mershon, to your point, uh, submitted the jury questionnaires to the lawyers, uh, the ground rules for jury selection, meaning, folks, this is very, very real. Let me just show you all uh, what these orders look like so you can see the back-to-back uh, rejection of Donald Trump. Here's one that says defendant's application for a stay of trial pursuant to CPLA section 230.30 pending the determination of defendant's motion for a change of venue is denied then 24 hours later. This application for an interim stay of the proceedings pending resolution of the article 78 proceeding is denied without prejudice to any determination of the full bench, meaning a full appellate panel will be meeting on Monday, but that's the first day of uh, jury selection. And this really just relates to this uh, gag order issue um, right there where Donald Trump says he wants to be able to attack Justice Mershon's daughter, who was included in the expanded and amended uh, gag order. I want to talk more about the difference between criminal and civil trial, because I think it's important for our, uh, our our viewers and listeners to understand how different this experience is going to be for Donald Trump than a civil case. Before doing that, I do want to reflect, though, on something that you mentioned about the law students that you spoke in front of. You know, I teach law school and undergrad at USC. In the spring, I teach undergrad. And what I'm about to say is going to kind of dovetail with the later topic we're going to talk about with Donald Trump bragging about taking away women's reproductive rights. But I ask my students, because I teach civil rights, I teach Title IX, you know, I teach these critical pieces of legislation that has moved our country forward. And I will show them the text, Cohen, of Title IX, of the Civil Rights Act, of the Voting Rights Act. And I'll say to my class of 60 students with each of those things, I'll ask them, say, do you think that today in 2024, this piece of legislation would be passed by our Congress? Anti-discrimination laws, Voting Rights Act, things like that. Not a single student raises their hand. And I said to them, It is 
really disturbing. It is so sad that this class of undergrads has less rights than you had, Cohen, than, 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 than your parents had, than, that my mom had, that, you know, that my aunt had. And I, I just wanted to make that point now. I'll come back to it when we talk about um, Donald Trump's unhinged announcement. But, but let me get us back on track. And I know I diverted there for a moment, though, to the difference between criminal and civil. Um, in a criminal case, Donald Trump's going to have to be there every day, right, Cohen? He can't just right. waltz in like he did in the civil case and then storm right. out like he did. This right. is a different set of rules. And by the way, from- by the way, Judge Mershon is a different type of a judge than Judge Engeron. Engeron is an incredibly permissive judge. I happen to like both of their styles. However, they are incredibly, incredibly different. Mershon isn't going to allow um, the leeway that uh, Engoron did. And I suspect the reason for that is, one, the New York AG is um, civil, as Ben was just describing. So it's monetary, not, um, you know, not loss of freedom. This one before Mershon is criminal and could result in immediate incarceration. Now, what's, by the way, this one is also before a jury, whereas Angoron's case was a bench trial. So I say all of this because if you start to see social media and the manner to which Donald is behaving, or worse, his sycophantic acolytes, the way that they are behaving, you could smell the desperation and the fear. Every single statement that I put out is met by massive, massive attacks. And the the attacks, many of which are completely fabricated. It's not even that it's twisted and taken out of context. I'm talking about completely fabricated, like the story that was put out by OAN about me having the affair with Stormy Daniels. And that dear old Donald was so good to me. He he cares about me so much that he gave me money to pay Stormy Daniels so that my wife wouldn't find out about it. I mean, you got to really love the, you know, the um, creativity. If they were any more creative, they would be following up on, you know, curb your enthusiasm. I mean, that's how they'd be working for Saturday Night Live. That's how laughable these people have become. They know. You see, I want to also explain the reason why Donald is as concerned and he's as um, fearful of this. People want to call it the hush money case. It's really business record fraud, campaign finance violation case. But we're going to call it what everybody else in the media is calling it, the Stormy Daniels case, hush money case, whatever you want to call it. The reason he's so fearful of this case is because he and his lawyers already know the evidence which is going to be presented against him by the prosecutors. It's called discovery. This isn't where you go into court and you've no idea what the prosecutor is going to throw at you, that it's some sort of a smorgasbord grab bag of, of stuff that you don't know. All the information that prosecutors intend on using to obtain a conviction is provided to the defendant well in advance of the trial. And so it has been done. So he knows, he knows the information and he knows that he's, that he's caught. That's the problem. And as we all know, there's one thing that Donald does not believe in, and that's called accountability. But April 15th may be, may be the beginning. Cohen, how are you holding up? Uh, not to be very honest with you, Ben, and, my, and our brigaders, not well at all. Um, you know, this is another thing that the sycophantic acolytes constantly like to attack me. I've been 
incredibly truthful, whether it's here on this show with our brigaders or on television or uh, on radio or in the press where I've said, this is exhausting mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. It is exhausting. It beats the living piss out of you. You know how many times, Ben, that I have said, I wish to God, I really do, that I wasn't involved in this case at all. I've done more than my share from the Mueller report to the you know seven congressional hearings to the 30 different times being before the DA's office, the grand jury testimony. I've been subpoenaed by Trump for the AG case. Um, you know, in the deposition, I've been on trial with the New York AG for two and a half days, yada, yada. Now, of course, you know, I'm going to be on trial again for God knows how many days with this Manhattan district attorney case. I am very physically tired. Uh, I am emotionally tired. I also, despite what so many people want to pat me on the back and say, you know, you're going to be in the history books. And so I'd rather not have been in the history books, right? Not only did I not want to be in the history books when I am deceased, I don't even want to be buried in the ground so that there's a reminder that I was even here. I want to be cremated, right? It's in my will. I just want to, I just want to, I, I, I just want some anonymity, despite what the Trump acolytes want to constantly attack me on. I, you know, I want to be able to start to rebuild my life, um, a life that was in very much enjoyable that has been taken away from me. And at my age, this is really not easy. And so, you know, when they say to me, well, then why the hell are you doing it? Why are you testifying? Because I am fucking subpoenaed. And I am not going to be the next Peter Navarro. Could you imagine if I turn around and I said, I am not? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're going to have three quarters of the country saying, why, do you have something to hide? I have nothing to hide. Everything that will be talked about at this upcoming trial has been discussed ad nauseum. I am actually tired of the story already. So, yeah, you know, I'm just tired. You know, when look, Donald Trump follows the same playbook over and over again, it's predictable, his legal moves, the projection, the attacking of the witnesses, the deflection, the, 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 the name calling, and then in court, he then tries to exclude his own comments that he makes extrajudicially where he threatens the witnesses. You know, I'm always just reminded about these statements that Donald Trump's made outside of, of court, um, you know, because it, it doesn't just go to Trump's criminality and cover up. It, it goes fundamentally to this issue of character and, and who we are as a nation. Um, when you talk about the fraudulent business records, you know, case and the felonies that Donald Trump is being charged with, you know, also at issue is the fact that while Melania um, had just given birth to Barron, that Donald Trump uh, had sex with a uh, adult film actress for, as she describes it, some of the most disgusting few seconds of his of his of her life, um, and that he didn't want that getting out before the 2016 uh, election, and that he then refers to the woman who he's had sex with, and he calls her a horse face. And he attacks her physical appearance and calls her horse face, horse face case, no affair with horse face. And he repeats that over and over again. You know, and I, and I just think about the country that we're living in. I, I just think about the, the, the pull up this image of the House Judiciary GOP, what they posted during the eclipse. Like this is what the Republican Party is, is has become. I mean, that they're posting a weird image of Donald Trump as the eclipse from their official House Judiciary GOP account, which is led by Jim Jordan, who covered up sexual abuse. And they're posting the image of a man found liable for sexual abuse, who is now calling a woman who he had sex with in a hush money payment type of case, a, a horse face. And here's which, what Donald way, Trump ben, said. Yeah, ben, one of the things actually that I even talk about in both Disloyal, um, my first book, um, as well as in Revenge, that's a common phrase by Trump, believe it or not. 
they used to refer to Lara Trump before she married Eric as Horseface. It's really unbelievable because not only did Donald used to do that, but so did Don Jr. and so did Ivanka when they were referring to her. Uh, I mean, I've talked about this quite a bit. It's, it's cruel, even if it's true. It's cruel, and it just, as you said, it goes to his character. But that doesn't, that doesn't seem to stop. That doesn't seem to stop his supporters at all. They actually find it funny. So, Cohen, the Trump family, Donald Trump, Don Jr., were calling Eric's wife, or at the time, girlfriend, uh, a horse face, the same name that Donald Trump uses to refer to Stormy Daniels? Yes. And I, 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 uh, In fact, they didn't want Eric to marry her. They wanted him to marry um, somebody uh, that worked at the Trump organization that Donald had known uh, the family literally since she was like 14 years old. Uh, she ended up, you know, working uh, at the company. And they, and if it wasn't her, then there was a Miss Universe um, winner that Donald wanted Eric to to, ma to marry. Uh, you know, it's really very, very funny. And these are the kind of name calling that used to go on at the Trump organization. So why would it not go on if Donald Trump is president of the United States? I mean, could you imagine? I like how, again, if you if you just break down that, Salty, throw that back up for a second. If you just break down that post, I did, and of course, in all caps, because he has to explain to you nothing wrong in the horse face case. I mean, it's really incredible. She knows nothing about me other than her con man lawyer, Avenatti, and convicted liar and felon, jailbird Michael Cohen may have schemed up. Now, this is the part. This is the part that really gets, really fucking gets me, all right? That I schemed up? Seriously? You orange-crusted Mandarin fat lard-ass scumbag that I schemed up? The fuck? Seriously? And he puts that out on a post. So when you also asked me before, how, how do I feel? This is the sort of shit that gins up his support. It's like that silent whistle blowing that I keep talking about, that mob-like, you know, whistle that Donald is blowing for his supporters. Oh, my God. Michael Cohen schemed this whole shit up. That's where OAN and others picked up this nonsense, that we created this in 2016 so that we can extort Donald Trump. Sure, you idiots. I extorted Donald Trump for $130,000 that he ultimately paid me back on. I mean, come on. Wake up. Wake up, America. Cohen, I, I want to drill into this a little more, you know, just to educate everybody who may not have read the books on this Lara Trump thing. So how frequently would you hear Donald Trump and Don Jr. call Lara Trump a horse face? Was it ever said to her face? Was it always behind her back? And did Eric know that Donald Trump and Don Jr. were calling Eric's girlfriend a horse face? Okay, so lots of questions there. Yes, Eric knew. No, they did not do it to her face. It was always done behind her back. Uh, you know, they would talk about, um, you know, his dating when he was then going to get uh, engaged and so on. And that's how they used to refer to her as horse face. Horrific stuff. I want to show you this video. This is when Donald Trump goes out on campaigns. Part of, you know, pretty much all he talks about is in addition to praising the January 6th insurrectionist, changing the words to the national anthem, singing a song with the insurrectionist, who he calls hostages, saying deranged and unhinged stuff like he'd rather be electrosecuted than eaten by sharks. You know, he also then talks about the cases and he'll make like sex gestures when referring to Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis. And then, you know, he'll talk about the cases and, um, you know, he, he, here's what he says about Stormy Daniels. This is part of his stump speech, you know, where you're supposed to, in, in normal times, you're supposed to go and speak to people about the issues that matter to them. You're supposed to talk about things like health care and social security and wages and veterans and our allies and why your policies are better than your opponent's policies. Well, President Biden's out there doing that every single day. 
while Donald Trump is out there doing this. Hmm. To bring charges against me for now ancient, no affair story of Stormy Horseface Daniels, no attraction. <laughs> no affair, I call it no affair. Where there is no crime anyway. Again, character matters in you know, who. Yeah, sorry, Ben. You know, one of the things that's going on here, again, is this is explained simply as narcissistic sociopathy. It's narcissism at its best. Because this is an issue that is plaguing Donald, because this involves him and it's on his mind, he legitimately believes that this is of national importance and that it is worthy of being included in a stump speech, asking people for their support in a presidential run, simply, right? Imagine this, so that, you know, so that he could now include that in the stump speech because it is, of course, vital to our nation going forward and making America great again, is the fact that he has to make fun of somebody. He has to validate or, you know, vindicate himself from the allegations and doing so before this group, it gives him, uh, it's like, it's like oxygen, right? To somebody who just can't breathe. That's what it is for Donald. And he thinks that everybody is as concerned about his issue as he is. And that's, of course, like I said before, it is the perfect example of narcissism. You know, and at the same time, projection and confession, right? You've got a story we just posted on MidasTouch.com based on the types of things that Donald Trump has been posting today. And one of the things Donald Trump said, it's right here, is he says that Joe Biden has been jacked up on cocaine and that he won't debate President Biden unless President Biden takes a drug test before agreeing to the debate. Now, you and I have both predicted, Cohen, that Donald Trump is not going to debate, that he's going to come out with excuses. To me, there's all of the tells. I mean, the biggest one is that he didn't debate in the Republican primary, but you can chalk that up to the fact that he thought he was the presumptive, so why have to debate? But the reality is, is, is what is he going to even talk about on the debate? That he loves the January Sixthers, that he calls them patriots, What's he going to talk about when it comes to uh, women's reproductive rights? And I, I, I noticed that Donald Trump had challenged President Biden to the debate like months ago, like when no one would debate. And that's one of Trump's tactics, like offer a deal that nobody takes. Like, I'm ready to debate now. Well, this is not when debates take place. By the way, Ben, here's the craziest thing. Somewhere along the line, this narcissistic sociopath doesn't seem to understand that he is not the president of the United States, that he doesn't get to dictate the rules of a debate. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. So look, and I know I, I'm not going to call him what I always call him, Donald, snap up, okay? Follow me. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. You don't control the debate stage. You're not controlling Washington. You don't control the media. You control your Newsmax, your OAN. You control those sycophants that are following you. But the world does not bow to you. You don't make the rules. I want to remind everybody, patreon.com slash political beatdown. We've, you and I have been having such a great time on those uh, Zoom after shows with those meetings. I know we want to do one this week. You and I got to figure out the time because I know how swamped you are as well with trial prep. It would be so cool that we do just one more before the trial. I'd love for everybody just to, you know, and just show you the support, Cohen, and, and the love that they have for you. So I'm thinking Thursday. I will make Thursday work. All right. Let's let's will, do it on Thursday. We'll post I'm going to run my prep schedule around our brigaders because I do think it's important. And I think that 
the questions that they asked us last time, I thought were very relevant. I thought they were pertinent. They were well thought out. Certainly a lot better questioning by our brigaders than Alina Haba at the New York Attorney General case. That I can assure you. And I look forward to answering it because, again, my perspective on it is quite different than what you hear on television from many of the pundits and the hosts because they just don't know they're not on the they're not on the inside right they're on the outside and what they do is they take information that they you know that they receive and they try to break it down to try to make it almost like if it's their own that it's actually legitimate first hand knowledge which it's not fortunately for you guys, a little unfortunate for me, I happen to be intimately involved in the information that I'm providing is firsthand. I just think it's also when I leave those Zoom chats and and, and I, I love our lives here on YouTube, I just can't see everybody's faces. So I see the numbers, 10,000, 15,000, you know, we end up getting nearly half a million views oftentimes on these shows or even more, but I can't see the faces. And what I love about those Zoom mm -hmm. meetings is I love, I'm a, I'm a face-to-face -face person and I love to just connect with people in that way. So when I see everybody in that kind of more intimate Zoom meeting, it leaves me inspired. And so I would love for the whole community to be there. Join patreon.com slash political beatdown to really give you that positivity and send off you know, before trial, and we can kind of come together as a beatdown community. So patreon.com slash political beatdown. When we come back, I want to talk about that so-called fundraiser that Donald Trump claims where he raised all of this money that the media just bought hook, line, and sinker. I want to talk about uh, a few other things like that. Um, we, we got some, we got some prizes as well. Stock, certainly, for sure. Stock, we got to talk about. And, and we'll take our, our first and last quick break of the show. I tried so many different things to maintain a heart, healthy lifestyle, like crash course diets and starting daunting cardio routine. And frankly, it just hasn't been helpful for me. Now, we often think living a more heart-healthy life means making big, unsustainable changes. But with Superbeats, and you all know how much I love Superbeats. I talk about it all the time. With Superbeat Heart Juice, you can get daily blood pressure support in just two tasty chews a day. And they even promote heart-healthy energy without the stimulants. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Superbeats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. And trust me, I need normal blood pressure. Heart health is important for me because I want to be around as long as possible for my loved ones. Stupid Beat Heart Chew gives me the peace of mind that I'm doing the right thing and doing something good for myself every day. I take Super Beat Heart Chews every morning, and after taking them, I feel like I have more energy to take on the day. Super Beats Heart Shoes are a convenient way to support healthy blood pressure. No pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix and prepare. It's plant-based and no artificial sweeteners or colors. I recommend Super Beat Heart Shoes enough for our listeners. Again, I love them. So double your potential with Super Beats Heart Shoes and get a free month supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes on all bundles and... And get a load of this, a free full-size bag of turmeric chews valued at $25 with your order by going to BeatDownBeats.com. That's B-E-A-T-D-O-W-N-B-E-E-T-S.com. Get this exclusive offer only at BeatDownBeats.com and have yours today. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Roan. If you're like me, you understand the pains of finding out what to wear. Let's face it, most clothes are uncomfortable or too tight or never actually the size that you really are, and not to mention the annoyance of trying to put together a good outfit. And when you finally do have a good fit, you can only wear it for a few hours before you have an important meeting or dinner and then you have to change. Everyone wants to dress their best and look good at all times because frankly, it's a confidence booster. So here's the deal. 
Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products known to man. And here's why. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way, from your commute to work to your 18 holes of golf. It's time to feel confident without the hassle. With Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the products. It's that easy. With the Gold Fusion anti-odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can ditch the dry cleaner altogether. I absolutely love Roan. This has truly become my go-to commuter fit. We're on the move a lot, whether it's jumping from meeting to meeting or catching a flight or an important dinner. The Roan Commuter Collection has never let me down. The versatility and overall comfort of the collection is undefeated. And even after I wear it all day, I still feel super fresh because of that gold fusion anti-odor technology. The Commuter Collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. So right now, head to Roan.com slash Cohen, that's C-O-H-E-N, and use promo code Cohen to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E dot com slash Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, and use code Cohen. It's time to find your corner office. And now, back to the video. Welcome back to Political Beatdown. Here's what I want to share. I want to show you these, uh, this video that Donald Trump made of himself. This is Donald Trump talking about and bragging about how he overturned Roe v. Wade. Donald Trump had made this announcement a week ago, and then he said over the weekend, I am going to give you my position on what women should do with their bodies. And when I heard Donald Trump doing that in general, I said, so somebody who was found liable for sexual assault, somebody who's bragged about the assault and that's caught on tape with him saying it and who we know who's done that, somebody who had previously said that women should get punished who get abortions, someone who brags about overturning Roe v. Wade, who appointed the justices who overturned Roe v. Wade, praised their decision, said that he would appoint other justices just like the ones who overturned Roe v. Wade. He called the Dobbs decision a miracle. Why you have no right to give a statement. It's a despicable thing that he knows I'm going to be, I'm going to make a statement about your reproductive rights. And he made a statement. And let me show you in this new video that Donald Trump made of himself and posted, Trump again takes credit for ending abortion rights. Play this clip. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. I'm so sorry. Which is he is such a fucking fool. There's no other way to... First of all, not all legal scholars wanted Roe v. Wade to be overturned. Not both sides wanted Roe v. Wade to be. Listen, you know, this newfound sort of this newfound sort of God that Donald is portraying himself at. It's so comical from a guy who has never I shouldn't say never, who has barely ever gone to church himself that cannot cite a single paragraph of the New Testament that means something to him, whether he's, you know, a bigger proponent of the New Testament than the Old Testament or the Old Testament versus the New Testament. He has no religious understanding because he has no religious conviction. And this newfound nonsense, this bullshit that he is constantly trying to portray himself at, 
as as a good Christian, and of course Joe Biden as a bad Christian, despite the fact that I know this, I know this firsthand that Joe Biden is a regular attendee at his church. I mean, it is absolutely comical that this guy is out hawking now for fifty nine ninety nine Bibles that, as far as I'm concerned, violate the separation of church and state. Why anybody would want the Constitution or the J6 uh, song in there or whatever else is in that Bible, the old sticky page Bible. It's amazing he's out there and that people are glomming this up. I mean, this is, to me, incredible. Do you not understand that he is specifically pandering to a group of individuals that he believes propelled him into the White House in 2016, thinking that it will be that he will be successful with them in propelling him back into the White House in 2024. I mean, it is it is a grotesque use of religion. Talk about for your own benefit, for your own desires. There's not a single one of the seven deadly sins that Donald has not, you know, committed again and again and again. Well, setting aside even religion, it's a grotesque use of government for Donald Trump to appoint himself as the person who's going to make decisions over women's reproductive rights and women's ah. health care decisions that, that should be made with their doctor and that his malignant narcissism and frankly also his hatred of women, um, as Donald Trump would use the word, how he likes to interpose things. He wants to interpose himself and the Republican Party between a woman and her doctor in very complicated, complex and serious health issues that Roe v. Wade was able to address and navigate that now has been set back. And we hear these stories and we know of these stories and we know of people in our lives and women in our lives who are suffering dearly. There are real world everyday consequences across this country of women suffering because they're not getting the health care that they are required to have because of Donald Trump and people like Donald Trump. Donald Trump in this video that he posts of himself goes on to thank the six, the six Supreme Court justices and drops their names, who he says had the courage to overturn Roe v. Wade. Play this clip. I want to thank the six justices, Chief Justice John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Neil Gorsuch, incredible people for having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. And if you go back and you look at what Donald Trump was saying in 2016, here was an interview that he had with Chris Matthews where Donald Trump said that he thought that women should be punished for, um, uh, for seeking reproductive care. Play this clip. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that... There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. And there yeah. is... Yeah, what they should do is they should, you know, they, they should tie them to a tree and beat them, right, Donald? You idiot. Except, of course, if it's one of his own kids, right, who's involved with an abortion or uh, IVF or anything like that. It's really, again, it just goes to the insane narcissism and stupidity the lack of intelligence that exists between his left ear and his right ear. Shame on him. Well, Truly Cohen, on him. speaking of punishment, the policies by Donald Trump have led to a regime of criminalizing women's reproductive care. Look, earlier today, the Arizona Supreme Court has ruled that an 1864 law is valid that criminalized abortion by making it a penalty and making it a felony, rather, punishable by two to five years in prison for anyone who performs or helps a woman obtain an abortion. 
the decision which could shutter abortion clinics in the state effectively undoes a lower court's ruling that stated that a more recent 15-week ban from March 2022 supersedes the 1864 law. I believe there is going to be a referendum in Arizona on a woman's right to choose on women's reproductive rights coming I mean, up. Could you imagine, Ben, it's kind of like saying that we as a society, we as America, have not advanced in in this theocracy, this theocratic ideology in 150 years, 1864. We're going to go back to treating people like that. Well, listen, there's a lot of folks in Trump's camp that would like to go back to 1864 before civil rights, you know, before the Obergefell same sex before marriage. Before the Civil War. Yeah. When the conf with the Confederacy, that what, what I said. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to share this with you, Cohen. This uh, this is a ad that President Biden put out, and um, it re really brought tears to my eyes. Um, it's about a couple, Josh and Amanda. They were expecting their first baby, and before Amanda had a miscarriage at 18 weeks, they had been preparing the room for their baby and 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 getting all of the and getting prepared. And Amanda was then denied standard medical care to prevent infection after the miscarriage. And the standard medical care would be an abortion. Doctors were forced to send her home. This is in Texas. Three days later, Amanda was in the ICU with sepsis. She almost died twice. And the infection caused so much damage, Amanda may never be able to get pregnant again. I want to share this video with you, and then I want to share with you a, a message that I got from um, one of our supporters here at the Midas Touch Network. But let, let me show you this, this new video out from the Biden campaign. So this is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. Here's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, this is the blanket that she was in. <laughs> her little footprints. It's okay. No. <laughs> I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. And a Midas it's not okay. It's it's not okay. You know, of course, that's what we say to our loved one to console them and so on. This takes us back to these back alley abortions where so many women died. So many women were maimed, scarred for life, in, incapable of carrying future children because at this point in their life, whether the child was the fetus was viable or not, or whether it was their decision, this is not acceptable. Not in America, not in 2024, not ever. We are not in 1864, Dorothy. So wake the fuck up. A Midas Touch Network supporter named Laura reached out and asked that we should be following the and getting literally hundreds and hundreds of responses of other women sharing very similar stories and uh it's it's all on the on on my twitter or or x account and i i was so touched by these stories that that everyone's been sharing that women have been sharing this is what laura says she goes I miscarried and want to explain a bit more to help some people understand Amanda's situation from that Biden video. After a miscarriage, you have to have a procedure called a DNC, which makes sure there's no leftover placenta or piece of embryo inside the mother. A DNC is categorized as an abortion. Without it, any remnant miscarriage 
cause an infection and be deadly. When this happens, it frequently turns into sepsis and the mother can die. Procedures called abortions don't always end pregnancies. Sometimes they prevent a woman from infection and a loss of her life after she has lost her pregnancy. Nearly all women miscarry at some point, some multiple times. Anti-abortion laws are preventing women who miscarry from getting life-saving care treated, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, pro-choice or anti-choice. Um, and, and when I read this, it was so powerful, and I wanted to share that because, you know, you handled in these MAGA Republicans always do this fear mongering, and, and and I don't even want to play the other clips where Trump says that because they're frankly so reprehensible and despicable. But where they go, you know, there's going to be you know abortions in the third trimester. There's going abortions after the baby gives birth and it's like stop the fear mongering that's not what's happening you know this is a you know this the, the, these are critical health care decisions michael cohen look this is something that i believe that the rnc will never be able ever in the for all eternity will never be able to get past. I believe that thanks to Donald, that the RNC shot itself in the foot and significantly in the foot. Women, whether you are Republican, Democrat, or independent, undeclared, there's, in my opinion, there's not a woman out there who should vote for Donald Trump simply because he wants to take credit for this ridiculous action, for this ridiculous overturning of a 50-year starry decisis case of Roe versus Wade. Now, I want to expand that because this is not only a woman's issue. This is also a men issue. Do you not have a mother? Do you not have a sister or a wife? Do you not have a niece? At some point in time, somebody in your family is going to be affected as a direct result of what Donald wants to take credit for, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And so what a fucking asshole. And as a man who is married for 30 years, I have a daughter, I have a dozen nieces, I am so offended at this, at this statement by him, by this action, by him in the RNC, I cannot understand how anyone, any person in the RNC could possibly, possibly accept him and want him to once again be president of the United States. Two finger salute. Definitely two finger salute. All right. And I'm going to say to you, Von Shits and Pants, fuck you already. All right. It's enough. In fact, it's not just me who's completely grossed out by you and by your behavior and your level of stupidity. Your own wife, Melania, is fucking grossed out by you. Cohen, let's talk briefly about the stock down 40% from its high last week. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it fluctuates a little bit each, you know, each day, but as, as we, I mean, you know, some days it may go up a little bit, but 40% from its high, you and I went through the financials, a $58 million uh, loss on $4.1 million in revenue in 2023, under 10 million unique visitors uh, to the site in a 30 day period, which is less than what we get here at the Midas Touch Network in a 48 hour period. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, 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 there, there's really no there there in terms of value from the 4.1 million in revenue. MAGA Republican Congress member Devin Nunes turned head of Trump media, made like 750,000 of the 400 of the 4.1 million in salary plus a 600,000 retention bonus. Dan Scavino was given a $2.2 million promissory note and $220,000. Um, even Trump's own independent auditor who Financial Times did a story about who has his own issues um, with issues of about being investigated by 
um, some of the accounting boards and, and who have been very critical of him in this Financial Times article. But even this guy, Ben Borger, said that the independent auditor who basically passes everybody says that Trump media would uh, struggle to exist as a going concern. So, so what do you make of it all? Yeah. So, Ben, you and I spoke about this with the Brigaders literally uh, the day that uh, it was being announced that it was going public. And I told you, and you, of course, acknowledged it. It wasn't that I am some financial wizard or guru. Clearly, it's a meme stock. There's no real value to this company, the valuation. If you saw that chart, and take away Trump Media Technology Group, just taking a look at that chart, in the world of finance, that is known as a death spiral. You are on a plunge straight down into the abyss. That's the problem when you have a meme stock, a stock that's not supported by any of the metrics that every other stock um, you know, goes by. Now, this stock got that big, gigantic boost because Trump supporters, and we know that there are Trump supporters, were supporting the stock. At some point in time, it's one thing when they're giving him their money because they are supporting him. It's another thing when you're investing in the market. You're not investing to give Donald Trump money. You're investing into a company that is dead in the water. It's on a death spiral straight down. They know it, and so they jump ship. I will tell you, there are obviously a lot of people who have made a ton of money shorting the shit out of this stock. I believe what some of the folks have said, uh, the financial gurus have said that this stock shouldn't even be a $2 stock. It should be a penny stock. But, you know, Ben, before we end up signing off, I do really, would, I would love if you can have Salty play, uh, especially because like when I said before that I'm so grossed out by Donald with his horse shit and the way that he's treating women's rights and this entire abortion issue. I know that you have videos of the one where Melania refused to accept the award and instead Donald did it, right? So if you could take it from that, I think our brigaders would appreciate it. Yeah, let me show you the two clips. The first one, a Mar-a-Lago event where Trump tried to entice Melania to show up by having someone there give her some award of, of her the way she's helped children, which I've never seen her do, but that's how Donald Trump tried to get her out. But she didn't show up, and so Donald Trump then took the award and acted like he won. Play this clip. We're on board. <laughs> we want to take this opportunity. I know my uh, first lady couldn't get here, but we want to give Melania Trump the Child Advocacy Award, because she said she just she did so much for children when she was first lady. So, sir, this is from my last Thank Please make your way to the. He holds it up like he won. He goes, "Thank you, everybody." He gave Melania a fake award that she ditched him and didn't show up at. Then he took the fake well, award for busy, Melania man. and celebrated the fake award with. Yeah. I mean, she was very busy. She couldn't come downstairs, you know, because she was, I don't know, had maybe you know, having something done uh, or I, I, I or maybe I don't know, maybe just ordering lunch. She was so busy. She could not come downstairs in order to accept an award. And then they went to this fundraiser the next day, which uh, all of the media reported $50.5 million. It's like, can y'all stop reporting what Donald Trump tells you? Wait until you get the actual reports themselves. And then you can, Donald Trump's been found liable for fraud for inflating financial valuations. And so you're just going to accept that it's double the number. It just happens to be twice as much as Biden. Let me, let me play this clip. And then Cohen, I just want to get your response to it. And also not just Melania being disgusted by Donald Trump at this event, but just, you know, how Donald Trump operates. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that, but let me show you this clip. People are just wanting change. The rich people want it. Poor people want it. Everybody wants change. Our country is really doing poorly. We're a laughing stock all over the world. And we're going to get that change very quickly. And this has been some, uh, incredible evening before it even starts because people they wanted to contribute to a cause of making America great again. And that's what's happened. We're going to make America great again. 
She looks disgusted. This is also on the eve of a three. I do have to say though, Ben, ben I do, I do have to say that her hair looks spectacular because I forget you were reporting in one of our previous shows how much money that the super PAC or the campaign is paying for her, her styles. About half yeah. about half a million dollars. Um have got Mr. and Mrs. Magadoni have paid close to half a million dollars. Uh, to her stylist and hairdresser and Trump's private jet and but 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 uh, Alina Haba got between three and a half and five million dollars when she was out there partying in St. Bart's and uh, you know with individualized Dior bags but 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 Cohen it's like what's your message though to the media that Trump's been found liable for financial fraud he, he says this number 50.5 and look if ultimately the FEC reports show that sure but all of the objective indicia from the fact that trump did it after the reporting deadline so the next time he has to report is july so they're really gonna just go along with the trust me bro approach after donald trump's been found liable for inflating valuations you know how he operates he picks the number that he wants and then finds a way to get there and has his people so maybe it's pledges commitments past monies included in that bucket. What do you make of it? I mean, just look at the number itself, right? The number itself goes to show you it's a contrived number, 50.5, right? I mean, it's it's they weren't the the amount that you can give, I believe is four hundred and eighty thousand dollars per person under no circumstance, depending upon, I mean, uh, What's the likelihood that it's 50.5? It's just not a true and accurate number. <laughs> and the beautiful thing, or the beautiful thing is that now he has time before which that that number will get reported. And his feeling is that we're all stupid, that Americans only have like at best a three to five day window of remembering anything. And uh, many in his specific case with his MAGA morons, that's true because he's constantly on a daily basis, just, you know, he's it's just overwhelming their, you know, their senses, their brains with more and more chaos and more and more horseshit. So truth be told, he's right about that. But we're not forgetting, Ben, the very second that that FEC filing comes out. I know you and I are scouring it for exactly this. And then we will come back and we will say, we told you early on that the number was not going to be accurate. It is a made up number. And then most people on the MAGA side will say, so what? Who cares? All right, it's $30 million. It's a lot of money. They're right about that, but it's not 50.5. Cohen, uh, it's always a pleasure, uh, especially as we get closer to the Manhattan District Attorney criminal trial, to get your insight and perspective. This is an unprecedented trial of a historic nature, and to get your insights. And I know there's things you can share and can share, of course, and we're all going to be very respectful of that. But we'd all like to wish you well. We're going to do that at patreon.com slash political beatdown as well, so we could see all of the brigaders' faces. So if you're not, you have not yet joined our Patreon, join it right now, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash political beatdown. In the next 24 hours or so, Cohen will post that secret link that people can click once they join. So keep checking the feed. It'll definitely be posted by midday tomorrow. You'll get that secret link. Then on Thursday, we'll give you the time and place. And I'd love to see everybody's faces wishing you well, Cohen. I want to see all of the brigade, the brigaders. So it's patreon.com slash political beatdown. Everybody also, make sure you subscribe to the Maya Culpa Blue podcast search. Maya Culpa, wherever podcasts are available. Not the red one. It's the blue one when you see it. You'll see a red and a blue. You only need to be subscribed to the blue Maya Culpa feeds. 
So subscribe there and hit subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. We're getting close to that 3 million subscriber mark. Let's get there by this summer. Thank you, everybody, for watching Political Beatdown. We'll see you on Thursday. And I really want to see all of your faces on that Zoom meeting, patreon.com slash political beatdown. See you next time. Shadow Brigaders, shout out to the mighty.